Hi, I'm Kelly Norton, your AZ Realty Lady at EXP Realty. Count on me for all things Arizona real estate. Hello everyone, I am Jason Bates, owner of Electrum Financial, where a mortgage is not just a flip of the coin. So if you're looking to refinance or purchase a home in the state of Arizona, I certainly would love to be your broker of choice. Please reach out to me. If you're watching this on Roku, you're probably watching it on Prem TV. That's the app on Roku that you can download to watch the show. So I encourage you if you have a Roku device to do that. And with that, I am also joined here by, whoop, little production flaw there. <laughs> do I? <laughs> there you go. There you are. Hey guys, I'm Kelly Norton and I'm known as the AZ Realty Lady and I help people that look to buy or sell here in the Phoenix area. I'm a Valley native and I've been selling real estate since 2001 right here in Phoenix. So uh, feel free, call me or text me. It's the best way to reach me if I can help you with buying or selling a home in the area. Nice, nice work. So as you can tell, this is a self-produced kind of video <laughs> podcast or whatever not the most professional i guess but we try to make it as professional as we can and we hope to bring you all the information that you need to make an informed decision when purchasing real estate here in the state of arizona and also sprinkle in some lifestyle things here in arizona for all the people that are out of state or maybe even people here in state that maybe aren't aware of some of the things that this great state has to offer so with that Let's jump right into the first um, story, shall we? We shall. Yeah. Oh, but you know what? Before we do that, I want to just yeah. um, let's touch touch base on something that you saw on your TV real quick, right? It oh, kind of yeah. is uh, last week's show, a little bit of a carryover, I guess, for that. Um, and so let me bring that up here, and hopefully we'll be able to talk again. The self-produced show. All right, so let me make sure your mic's on here. This is go. basically a picture I took of the TV. Can can they hear me? Yes, Jason? everybody can hear you. We're all okay. good. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So so a lot of times on television, you're going to have um, you know all of these advertisements and promises, whether it be um, a real estate firm. Um, you see a lot of that if you're in the Phoenix area, you see, um, you know, two or three main advertisers on TV and uh, for, for real estate companies and promises of how quickly they can sell your home or get you more. Um, and then you have uh, also mortgages, uh, mortgage lenders, bankers, brokers, whatever you want to call it, that also um, have these different promises. So I encourage you to pause your TV and read <laughs> yeah. fine line. Now, you'll notice a lot of the real estate brokerages actually don't have the disclosure. They're supposed to find all advertising. Um, and at least here, this this mortgage uh, company did do that, but you want to be certain to read it. Uh, Jason and I felt that this was a little bit unclear, right, Jason? It, yeah. It says here that um, refinancing may cause finance charges to be higher over the life of the loan. So right. basically what they're saying is, you know, um, I think this commercial was like lock your rate for 90 days. Mm -hmm. and um but you can refinance but if you refinance your financing charges will be higher so for me i took that as if you opt to do the refinance later than the program they're going to put you in is going to have higher finance charges jason yeah. took that differently so to me that's not a clear and defined advertisement disclosure right. because it's confusing it is confusing it is confusing and the thing that we're going to start seeing more of is we're going to see mortgage companies, brokers, loan officers, uh, you know, like I mentioned last week at a continuing education class for realtors, one loan officer stood up and said, hey, two one buy down and wrap mortgages. We can get more of your buyers qualified. Um, and you got to read the fine print on these deals. You got to be very, very careful as a home buyer or homeowner when looking to refinance don't be attracted just to the shiny object that is the rate uh, but look at the cost over time and does it really pencil out for your needs if it does fine great um, 
And that's what I, th this is how I took this, this, that disclosure. Refinancing may cause financing charges to be higher over the life of loan. Kind of a warning. Hey, you're refinancing, maybe higher. Um, so I can see the confusion on this. So I guess the moral of the story, buyer beware. Right? Yes. Get with people you Back. trust. Yeah, <laughs> not fast talkers on TV. Right. Okay, so let's dive into the first headline here. And I'm sorry I'm not playing the transitions, but we can all deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So the first um, headline here. Oh, let me actually, the first one, this is the first one. Good. Production value is really hitting the mark today. Um, <laughs> it shows we're real people, right? Yeah, Sometimes we're real these people. Sometimes things don't work out exactly as planned. You just got to roll with it, make the best of it. Yeah, the entertainment <laughs> value is off the charts. Man, wow. Okay, so. At least we're not having wardrobe malfunctions, right? Yeah, no wardrobe malfunctions. <laughs> um, okay, so NIMBY. What the heck is a NIMBY, right? NIMBYism. Right. You can put an ism behind it. We used to have a joke by that while calling into work. I got ism, cholerism. <laughs> I'm over sick. Ism? I can't make it in today. <laughs> <laughs> the isms. Okay. Sorry. Bad joke. Um, NIMBYism is no way to address Arizona's housing crisis. Holy cow. That's a headline if I ever heard one. Okay. So I wanted to outline some of the paragraphs here. This article is brought to us by the Phoenix Business Journal. Thank you. Uh, there's, there is a housing affordability, I don't want to say crisis, but maybe it is a crisis. We're all aware with interest rates going up, inflation going up, everybody's got a lot of pressure. Uh, rents going up uh, quite a bit. And so developers um, are trying to fill this, but they're having some difficulty getting affordable housing, right? Yeah. And so they're looking at alternatives. So you see a lot of apartments or maybe townhomes or these sort of things popping up and they want to put these townhomes and things any and everywhere they can, especially with costs going up, labor going up, that sort of thing. They want to put it in, in more affluent areas because they can charge a higher premium or dollar amount for them but the people that live in those places don't necessarily want that in their backyard. Right, and and also they're you know they can charge more for them, and if they're doing multi housing, they're they're able to build more units on the same amount of land. Right. So certainly benefits them, right? <laughs> right, exactly. So NIMBY, not in my backyard. That's the acronym for not in my backyard. And there are some groups that are fighting this with builders. They don't want it in their backyard, even homeowners. And I can understand that as a homeowner myself, I wouldn't want Section 8 housing as much as I want everybody to have a home. I wouldn't want that in my backyard because that devalues my property that I've worked so hard for. And that's the, and we see the this. tug of war that we're facing. Right. Um, and we see this, you know, when we're when we're showing homes, just to kind of give people that real life uh, experience as a real estate agent. When I'm out showing homes, and we see a house that, you know, backs to a park or backs to a golf course or just backs to another regular single family home, um, that's much more desirable than when we're showing a home that has maybe a, a duplex or an apartment complex behind. A lot of times the buyers that you're showing the home to, they see that apartment complex as a negative. Mm -hmm. They they feel, and whether it's multi-housing or an apartment complex, a lot of times those are you know multi-level units. They can look into the backyard, people lose their privacy, there's noise. Um, and so a lot of times that, that really will keep people from making that offer. So when a home sits on the market longer, not getting an offer, what usually happens, they have to reduce the price. So that's what we're talking about with kind of devaluing your property. A lot of people don't want to purchase those properties. And when people hear that one's being built behind them, a lot of times you see the house go on the market. Exactly, exactly. Now this is an opinion piece from the Phoenix Business Journal. It's important to note these aren't necessarily facts. This is an opinion piece that they wrote here. Um, but I thought it was important for us to talk about because when you buy a house, especially at these elevated prices, it's not cheap. 
it's a big investment and you don't want that investment to be ruined um, or devalued for any reason. Um, so this opinion goes on to say that, hey, look, places like Scottsdale, Gilbert, terribly short of housing opportunities. A recent, ho recent housing study showed that Scottsdale is the only city in Phoenix Metro where law enforcement officers cannot afford any more than a one bedroom apartment and firefighters and teachers are entirely priced out. And then it puts in this little dig in here. When this affordability fact was pointed out to a recent Scottsdale mayoral c candidate, that person said that those people should just move to Mesa where housing is more affordable. Ouch. Ouch. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's the proper thing to do when you're running for mayor, but at some well, point, I guess. Exactly. No, I mean, that's kind of a, a, a shallow answer, right? I mean, yeah. It, yeah. it is an expensive area. Unfortunately, I think if you build multi multi-family and housing there i mean there were condos there were townhomes and there's some of those go for you know eight hundred thousand. so um scottsdale is such a desirable area to live that my fear is that even if they try and build more affordable housing there it's just going to attract more of the um you know the part-time um snowbirds and more mm -hmm. people who have been wanting to live in that area. I don't necessarily know that it's gonna solve the problem um, of finding housing for those police officers and for the teachers and um, you know people that, that don't have that. And I think firefighters might be in that same bracket too, you know? So I don't know necessarily that it will solve it. I think it's just gonna give more housing and, and get bid right back up because it is okay. such a desirable area to live. So- Well, you know, Phoenix had the same issue. If Phoenix had mm -hmm. the same issue, you had, if you're a Phoenix police officer, you had to live within the city of Phoenix. Um, but that has since changed. They've allowed you to move out to right. Buckeye or other places um, and yeah. open that up. So it's not just Scottsdale or Gilbert here that's under that kind of fire. And this is all part of growth, right? When the city's growing at the pace at which Phoenix has been growing over the past 10 years, 20 years even, you're going to run into these problems. I don't know that there's an easy, easy solution for any of this. Um, yeah, I agree. Yeah, this this um, next thing. It's so if we look at ourselves and we're kind of a uh, we're behind the ball, I guess, or behind California. What California does could transpire to Arizona in 10, 15 years, or even sooner in some cases. So when we look at what is California doing to handle its affordability. That may be a precursor to what happened here in Arizona. And so it's interesting that they point out here that California, um, under the mandate of the governor, I'm not sure what that means, mandate, yeah, um, created accountability for an enforcement unit. So they created a whole separate task force for this very issue to monitor whether or not local municipalities are approving new housing and if and if not the city could new, approving new housing and if not the city could be hit with escalating fines which th now they're going to hit the city for fines and then the city is going to tax its citizens more to cover yeah. those fines it, right it sounds like a committee just to possibly help collect more taxes and more fines and more money. <laughs> yeah, and even, it doesn't name the city or legislator here, but one California legislator right. even put forth a bill that would have forced cities, forced to allow four to eight unit story buildings within a mile uh, of rail stations or bus stops, regardless of local rules. Now, in Arizona, and you can maybe speak to this a little bit here, Kelly, in certain areas of Phoenix, you can't build above a certain number of stories because you ruin the views of Camelback Mountain or you know other viewpoints here in the city. So Correct. I think Trump even tried to build a, a little mini Trump Tower down on Camelback at one time and they said, uh-uh, yeah. nope, sorry. Um, so this was interesting that they're gonna force these things kind of in people's faces. I think they force right. a lot of things in California. Yeah. You know, and yeah, that's, know. we have so many people moving here that are, are just sick of that. So I yeah. truly hope that that doesn't, doesn't happen here. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, 
real estate's an investment, right? So yeah, totally. a lot of times when you're purchasing things, you are looking for a view. You are looking to kind of work your way up to an area that you kind of had as your goal. Um, you start in one spot and kind of aspire to be in another area. And right. so if you have this eight story unit that's now blocking these views that people aspire for, what is that going to do? You know, people right. might not want to want to pay for those premium properties. You know, may not attract certain incomes to the area that really help the economy. I mean, there's different ways to look at it, right? Yeah. I don't, I don't see it as a bad thing, really. I mean, I, the, forcing cities, yes, I see that as a bad thing. But letting it yeah. organically kind of happen, what's wrong with that? Right. If Scottsdale doesn't yeah. have affordable housing, then why is that a problem? Go, right. You know, if you work and you're affluent and you want to live in, does Beverly Hills have affordable housing? Does Martha's Vineyard yeah. have, you know, do some of these affluent areas? No. So I don't see that that's a problem. But um, now the opinion piece goes on to say here, unless the city council, uh, councils of the Phoenix Metro wake up and see how their anti-housing policies, the rhetoric, man, oh my God, strong policies are pushing our state over a cliff. Wow. Strong words. Um, a similar action like California's SB9 will be the result and our state legislator step, uh, steps in to solve the problem that they themselves cannot solve. So basically we'll make a law to force everybody. And that's what he's basically saying here. He might be right. I hope not, but he might be right. Yeah. I hope that isn't the case. I thought that was kind of interesting to see with the affordable housing um, situation. Yep, I've always said, we don't need more down payment assistance. We don't need any more of that kind of stuff. We need more affordable housing, right? And the way to do that, in my opinion, is take some of the money, incentivize some of the builders to build more affordable housing. Give the chance of ownership. You roll that equity into the next home and the next home. And before you know it, you're living in Scottsdale. Mm-hmm. But. Yep, exactly. What I, what I noticed too, a lot of the new builders are giving so many options for these elaborate upgrades so yeah. their their base price really isn't that bad but by the time a lot of these people upgrade their home to what they're seeing on hgtv and everything else it's a hundred thousand dollars more yeah. so you know there i think there is ways for people to get it a little bit more affordable maybe not having to have their first home be blinged out like hgtv but that's what <laughs> we've become accustomed to seeing and that's what yeah. everybody wants so, I want you know, subway tile. I want to pay three hundred or square foot for it. Okay. Right, and and I always I always educate my buyers too that you know these these builders um, if you're using if you're getting an upgrade to the builder most of the time they are getting some type of an incentive off of this contractor so they're getting a percentage so if you're paying twenty thousand dollars for your tile you know they might be getting twenty percent of that. Um, back in right. as an incentive for them using you know all of their people are going to that one contractor so if there's something that you can do after the fact and just kind of earn save up money earn your money save it up and do things after then do them after because yeah. then hopefully it'll be more affordable for you and you're not just putting more money in the builder's pocket yeah exactly good advice you don't need to go in with all the bling work your way up to it it sure um, looks nice, but <laughs> yeah. Plus, they're kind of trendy, right? I mean, some here today, gone tomorrow, right? Right. On very, very stuff. true. Um, okay, so the next thing I want to bring up here, we'll touch on it real quick, but I think this is on a lot of people's minds, and that is prices. Are we going to hit a home mm -hmm. crash? What's happening in the real estate market? What's going on, right? Um, yes. So I want to touch base on this because I, I think this is a, a good one to talk to people about. So the headline here, Western U.S. continues to lead home price, lead in home price, and then comma value. And I know it's cut off there, but it says declines, value declines. So it's saying the U, Western U.S. United States is leading, but leading in prices declining. So. I get this all the time. I know I feel like there's a lot of people on the fence, you know, that are renting. Should I don't want to buy right now because rates are high and I feel prices are going to come down. I know a few people that I've dealt with over the past six months have backed out of contracts 
and fear that they're gonna pick it up at a cheaper price in a relatively short period of time, which back six months ago, rates were much better. And if you're looking at payment, even if the price do drop, prices do drop by 10%, you're still paying the same amount. So yep. it's kind of a double-edged sword a little bit, depending on how you're looking at it. Um, now, this, this thing kind of, I think this article does go into some positive things here too that I want to touch base on too. So I'd like to get your, your perspective on it too, Kelly. Uh, sure. West Coast markets feeling the brunt of price and value drops through high growth housing markets during the COVID-19 pandemic. Think Boise, Idaho and Phoenix are cooling rapidly too. And I think that so number is skewed a little bit. Yes, and and just to to pause right there on that. Yeah. So if you think about you know Boise, Idaho, and Phoenix, so Boise became this hot spot over the last few years. So many people wanted to move there. Phoenix yeah. is a hot spot for investors, and that's what people have to understand is that we have these i buyer type companies that purchased um, a, a bunch of homes. They would buy them even above value a little bit, and now they are dropping their prices drastically. The rest of the market's not really doing that, but a lot of these iBuyer companies are really selling their homes for so much less. And when I say so much less, guys, I've seen them on $500,000 homes, $80,000 um, reduced. So, and even 100,000. My husband's an appraiser and he's seen them as well. Um, so you're, you're definitely seeing them. And with this iBuyer, and I can say this, um, you know, Open Door is a really big eye buyer in a lot of these different cities. And uh, so when you have that happen, and now they have all this inventory because the rates went up a lot faster than they thought, they're dropping these prices. But that's not the entire market. That's just a little pocket of the market, but it's kind of making those numbers seem, I think, worse than they really are. I agree, 100%, 100%. Now, the next paragraph here, it says, once we hit spring, we'll likely see some home value appreciation picking back up, but very slight compared to where we were in, during the pandemic. Uh, Batcher uh, continued, we're likely going to see things level, level out longer term, maybe 0% growth before going back to the 3 to 5% typical long-term growth. Now, what's interesting about that comment is she's mentioning next spring. Um, so, and I think Phoenix is a little unique in the country. We've got a lot of jobs coming here. I mean, a lot of jobs coming here. So as I've always said, as the jobs go, so does housing. If job market is strong, housing is gonna be pretty strong. So I think Phoenix is gonna be in a little bit of a bubble. Plus uh, our neighbors aren't doing as well as we are as far as states go. So that's still got the migration kind of factor going on here. So with that being said, and people having low interest rates, a lot of equity, they're not putting the houses on the market, builders aren't building a lot of homes right now, there's gonna be supply issues as mentioned in the previous article. It's gonna keep these prices elevated, I think, for quite some time. So I think the number that Kelly mentioned there is a big part of that. Now we do rank, according to this, we rank number seven in Western cities, or I guess in the country, because Florida is not a Western city, is it? Um, yeah. So I don't know how that made that mark there, but yeah. it basically just saying the Western cities are the ones leading the charge here, uh, eight through one, and um, devaluation, I guess. But it's not even really devaluation. I don't feel. No, and and I'm still seeing things selling, right? I mean, the average days on market is hovering around 30 days, which is actually a normal. Um, you know, better, way better than normal um, average days on market. So, I mean, we're not really seeing uh, things as bad as what you see the media talking about. We're seeing an adjustment, a correction. Absolutely. Things yeah. used to sell in a day and they used to have 12 offers. Now things, you know, I, I just listed a property that's in an area called Casa Grande. That's not in the Phoenix metro area. It's quite a drive out. It's a week in on the listing and I'm being told I'll have an offer today. You know, that that is a sign to me that we're still pretty good. This is about a $500,000 home. Yeah. And um, 
you know, there's there's even six hundred thousand dollar listings and eight hundred thousand dollar listings. We're still getting showings, still getting offers. The higher you get, it does slow just a tad more, but that is normal yeah, in a normal. normal market. When you get closer to luxury, which luxury now is is you know one and a half to two million versus yeah. it used to be a million, right? So. Right. Um, when you get closer to that luxury price point, things do naturally slow down. There's not as many people in that affordability range. So you, yeah. you kind of have to look at things with uh, with perspective. Absolutely. Now, what was interesting about this next uh, paragraph, and we'll keep it brief, was that people tend to stay in their homes 13 years. That's, that's up. Because I think in the mid 2000s, people stayed in their homes maybe three years. So, it was three to five. Yeah, yeah, three to five. So 13 years now, according to National Association of Realtors, that's probably an indication of low rates. They don't want to give them up. Right? Um, yeah. Affordability for first time home buyers to enter the housing market remain the biggest challenge, which is why I said builders should be incentivized to build more affordable homes, especially with high, high mortgage rates, higher mortgage rates, with inventory likely to remain hamstrung from the foreclosure for the foreseeable future, excuse me, is ex um, it's expected the U.S. housing market will be inventory star for the foreseeable future. And I tend to agree with that statement. I tend to agree with that statement. And for those reasons, yeah. I don't think we're going to be in a crash necessarily, but we got to let these numbers kind of play themselves out, right? All these eye buyers, yeah. all these other kind of, you know, hocus pocus kind of mortgage companies and real estate companies that are out there trying to take a promising thing and all of these, you know, yeah. yeah, all of this stuff. Yeah. We, and there's, there's some commercials out there, guys, that you'll see that say, you know, they still say, oh, you know, and it's a testimonial, right? And people are on there saying, oh, my home was sold in, you know, so many hours or just a couple <laughs> days. Right. And when was that recorded, right? So right. again, buyer beware. Um, I really think that a lot of these niche type brokerages and these niche type uh, mortgage programs and the iBuyer phase and, and all of that I think is, is going to start to kind of go away and go back to more of a normal, a normal market. I agree. I agree 100%. And we need to get rid of some of this fluff, I guess, that's yeah. out there. We do need to get rid of it. Yeah. Okay. So with that, we're going to wrap it up. We've taken enough of your time today. We really appreciate you spending time with us. Please share with your friends and family. We'd appreciate that support. Reach out to us. We don't bite. We'd love to talk to you. We love talking to a lot of people. We're kind of in the talking business. So we'd love to hear from you. <laughs> um, and if you're watching yes. us on YouTube or whatever, write comments, yep. whatever. We'd love to chat with you. Yeah, and I think you, uh, towards the end of this, you have my YouTube, because some people might be watching this on my YouTube, but yeah. um, if they're watching this on, on Roku, then uh, definitely you can check out my my YouTube. It's uh, Living in Phoenix, but also uh, if you look up AZ Realty Lady, um, and I'm Kelly Norton with an EY, so just remember that if you are uh, trying to Google or, or look me up. All right. With that, everyone, have a great day, a great week, and we will see you next week. Take care. Take care.